So this video is gonna be the first in a three-part series where we will discuss all things ACF Pro. This latest release cycle has really been heavily centered around giving ACF Pro first-class integration into our family of builders. And the brand new dynamic content looper provider is the primary driving force behind that. Ever since loopers have hit the scene, one of the questions we keep getting over and over again from our users is, when are you gonna support ACF Pro? When are you gonna support ACF Pro? It is just kind of an industry standard at this point that so many people use to really extend the mileage of their WordPress installations and just get a lot more functionality out of it. We know that it's a hugely useful tool in your builds, and so that's why we're really excited to bring this brand new suite of features to you all with this latest release cycle. So I've got a little example template that I've thrown together here that kind of is gonna be used to demonstrate various aspects of this integration and how you might use it in your own builds moving forward. Now, if you're new to ACF Pro or Advanced Custom Fields Pro as it's otherwise known, like I mentioned earlier, it's really kind of an industry standard at this point. Effectively what it is, is a way for you to add custom meta fields to your post types, your terms, your user accounts, really anything, and just extend that functionality that's already there. So how this works is back in your WordPress admin, you will have this custom fields menu item that'll appear when you activate the plugin. And when you navigate to this page, what you can do is add new field groups. And these field groups can be applied to different contexts, such as pages or users or terms, like I mentioned earlier. For example, you're gonna see how I use this in our template in just a bit, but on my user account pages, I've added my own custom image field. Now, WordPress does have an image field for its users, which is powered by Gravatar. However, I wanted to show how you might be able to extend this just a little bit to get a little bit more control out of those user accounts if you need it, because not everyone uses Gravatar, or you might just wanna use something more specific for each of your users. So that's kind of a nice, little setup there. Or if I jump over to my page field groups here, you'll see that I've added a ton of stuff here for something I'm calling workout information. Try and imagine a scenario where maybe you're working for a client or even yourself, and you have maybe dozens of pages that you need to style in a very specific manner to showcase a very finite set of data. So for example, if you were running a gym or a fitness center, maybe you have dozens of different workouts or classes that you offer to your users, and you wanna put all that data up on your website in a really nicely formatted way. Well, there's gonna be consistent bits of information across all of those pages that you'll need, such as the name of the workout, maybe a secondary title and a quick description explaining everything. And then perhaps you wanna reference who your instructors are that teach that class, show off the class times when everything is available, when users can register for a class and show up. And then finally, maybe you want just a little gallery where you can show off some pictures of, you know, people hanging out, having a good time at class, just making things a bit more personable. This is obviously not an extensive list by any means, but I just kind of threw something together to use as a quick example for this page so we can run through some different scenarios together. So once you've set up these various fields on the admin page here for ACF Pro, you'll then assign it to a context, which I've already done here. I'm adding all this workout information to only my pages. And if I hop over to an example page here and I scroll down a little bit, you'll see that we've got all these custom fields from our previous page, such as my workout, title, description, etc., showing up over here in these meta boxes. So what you could do is for however many pages or classes or whatever you're using these meta fields for, you can go to each one of those pages and enter in that information and then pull it through and style it in a very templated, consistent fashion across all of those pages. So where this can really benefit various teams or businesses is perhaps not everyone is comfortable in a builder interface. Maybe they don't wanna go from page to page and edit text and worry about clicking the wrong button and deleting something or moving it to the wrong spot. So what's really great about this is we can abstract all of that complexity away down to a few simple fields, train people on how to use this setup, you know, what you want entered where, and all they have to do when they wanna add a new page is come and fill out these forms and based on the styling that you have set up in your builder for those pages, that will be pulled through 
anywhere it needs to be used. So it's a really nice setup. There's really so many different ways that you can leverage this plugin in creative and useful context. But like I mentioned earlier, I really just wanna run through a few core concepts with you all in this series, really dig a little deeper into the new dynamic content looper provider, and just get your wheels turning on how you might wanna use this in your own builds moving forward. So to kick things off, let's start with this very first section here, which is pretty straightforward. I've actually got three of what I like to consider more singular fields. They're just referencing a simple static value that we're pulling through and outputting on our website. And then we do have one use down here of a multi-dimensional field where we've got an input that is returning multiple values and that's where our dynamic content looper is gonna come in and allow us to access each of those bits of data within that one field in ACF Pro. So let's just start from the top here and work our way down and kind of get a feel for how this works. So I'm going to click on this CrossFit label here. And if I open up my text editor, we will see that we've got a bit of dynamic content here that's obviously referencing one of our ACF post fields. Now a post field in ACF is anytime we're using this information that is being output to a post type. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're using it on a post specifically. Remember in WordPress that everything is a post type. Even pages themselves are just custom post types that are meant for different types of data. So anytime we're assigning these fields to a specific post type, that's when we're gonna be using this post field dynamic content. Also as a quick aside on this example, while we could mix and match things with our post types, for example, I could just pull through the title of the page and use it alongside this ACF data if I wanted. What I've done for this particular setup is I've assigned everything to an ACF post field. So you'll see that even my title is in here. And really that's just for me to show you all how you can leverage this in different ways. And just so we can focus on ACF Pro specifically. So starting with that workout line from our other page, you'll see up here in my list of fields that I've got a workout field as my very first item. If I click on edit, so we can open up the interface here for working with these items, you'll see that I've set this up as a text field, and then I've just given it a label of workout. And then when I do that, by default, ACF Pro is going to generate a field name for me. And this field name is very important. This is the key that we're gonna use to access this information later in our builds using dynamic content. So again, let's keep our workout key or field name in mind as we hop back over to our build. And we can see that the dynamic content string powering this little bit of content in our design is referencing that workout field. Now, like all of our dynamic content, there's no need to remember this or have to type it out manually each time. If I simply take this out open up our dynamic content pop-up and then search for ACF, you'll find a section here in the pop-up that is dedicated to accessing various information from your ACF setup. So we have four different field options, our post field, term field, user, option, and all those are pretty self-explanatory where they're going. And then as one quick aside here, you'll notice that we also have four more options here that are all called post field setting, term field setting. And what a setting is in ACF's world is basically when you wanna reference something from within each of these fields that you're setting up. For example, maybe there's a reason why you might wanna pull through this actual field label on the front end of your website and not just the value that you enter in on each of your pages. So that's just a good little side note to be aware of in case you do, for whatever reason, need to access some of this information in your build. So if I hop back over to my build here, remember that we're wanting to reference our post field because we've assigned this to our page. It's a field on our post type that we wanna get access to. I'm gonna click on this item. And when I do, it's gonna take me through to a little sub pane here where we need to specify the field or the key that we wanna reference and pull through. Now, the really nice thing on these top level fields, something that isn't nested yet is that you'll see we've got a select here. And if we click on this, it'll actually show us all of our top level fields that we can reference from within our installation. If there is a specific field that you're not seeing that you need to get to outside of this list, you can do that down here. 
But for the most part, we're just gonna be pulling through one of those items on our post type that we need for our design. And in this case, we need our workout field. The nice thing in our select here too, is that it gives you a little preview of the value on the right side here. So you can just double check that that is the proper field that you wanna be pulling through. So if we make our selection here, you'll see that our little preview down here is giving us a sense of what the output is gonna be when we add it to our page. And then all that's left to do is click the plus. It gets added to our text editor here. And you can see that we are now pulling through that CrossFit value that we've entered on our page here in the back end. And really it's that exact same process for these next two inputs as well, because again, these are singular fields. They're just returning a simple value. And in this case, it's just these strings that we're working with. So if I hop back over to our design, close this out, I'll click on my title now, open its text editor. And again, you can see that we've got our ACF post field dynamic content string here, and it's referencing our title field. Again, if we click on this description text, we'll see ACF post field, and the field is description. So those are all pretty straightforward. And if you've been using dynamic content in your build so far, there's not a whole lot of a difference from how you already pull through things like the title and the content in your build. It's really just a matter of making sure that you know what specifically that field name is that you wanna reference, and then pulling through that string where it's appropriate. Now the real fun for this section starts right down here where we've got a little section for our instructors with our imaginary class here. For this particular setup, I was trying to imagine a scenario where maybe like you're seeing here, you wanna just show a quick little snapshot of who the instructors are that lead this class, maybe show off a little thumbnail and some information on just how many instructors help to lead that class. So for this type of setup, what I think is really useful is leveraging some of the data structures that we already get out of WordPress by default. And in this case, that would be the users within our WordPress admin interface. So I have already in the back end here, if I go to my users and open this up, you'll see that I've added three different users here where I can associate all of the necessary data that I might need later on to access. So for example, their name, maybe their email if I need that later on. There's a lot of sub information that we can associate with each of these accounts rather than just having a singular field like we used before. Now, one thing I did to extend these a little bit, like I mentioned earlier, was I added a custom image field to all of my user accounts. As we discussed previously, WordPress does use Gravatar to pull through a thumbnail for your users and it's based off of the email associated with their account. But like I mentioned, not everyone uses Gravatar or perhaps you would just like to have a little more control over the images that appear on your site for each of those users. So this can be a really useful way to extend that functionality just a little bit. So all that I did for this field if I click my edit button here, as you'll see that we added our image type. I've just labeled it image, which gave me an automatic key of image here. And then one thing to be aware of for this specific type of field is the return format. Simpler fields like our text inputs or text areas from before don't have a return format because all they're giving you back is just that string that was entered in the back end. However, images in WordPress have all sorts of information associated with them when they're uploaded to your media library. For example, you can access the intrinsic dimensions of that image, maybe the alt text or caption associated with it, along with, of course, the URL to the resource itself. Now, if you need any of that meta information, you're gonna wanna use this image array option. And there are some specific syntax considerations to keep in mind when wanting to access that information in our dynamic content later. And we cover that in a lot more detail in our documentation. But for this specific scenario, all I really want is just the full size original image, which is what we get with this image URL option here. So it makes things just a little bit more simple to work with if we switch away from image array here and go to image URL, because that's really all we need for this particular scenario. So we've got our image field all set up here. And then for each of my users here, I've already added an image that I'm using in the design. And now if we come back here, we can really start breaking down this looper. So the first thing we need to figure out is where is our provider coming from? And you'll see that I've got it on this div element here. 
We've got our red provider color there. And of course, if we hover over a breadcrumb or anything, we can see that this is indeed where our looper provider is set up. So we're gonna go over to the customize tab here. And you'll see at the bottom that we have our looper provider enabled. We've set its type to dynamic content. And then for our input here, we are referencing our instructor's post field. So again, you might be asking where are we getting that key from? If we just go back to our post fields where we added everything, you'll see that I've got this instructor's field. So if I edit this so that I can read through the information, we've got our automatic key here of instructors, which is what we're referencing over in the build. You can see that our field type is set to user, which is what allows us to pull through any number of users from our installation into this input. So I've got my three instructors here, which I'm gonna loop over here in just a bit. And then one more thing to be aware of here is again, the return format of our user select. We recommend switching this away from the default user array over to user object. This is gonna make the dynamic content behave a lot more consistently. And it allows us to leverage when we can some of those nice little features like the select auto populating for you, if we can retrieve that value. So now that we set all that up and we kind of know how that's working, we can see that we're providing our user data here. And then of course, when we use a provider, we need to then later consume it in some way. So for this particular setup, if I click on image, you'll notice if I go up one more layer, I've got my looper consumer on this figure layer. And really, I just did this for some stylistic reasons. I needed one extra layer of markup to work with to kind of get the look I was going for. So nothing too crazy there, but if I go over to its customized control group, oops, let me click on the figure here. You'll see that we've just enabled our looper consumer and set it to all. So this is just saying whatever data is being sent in, which in this case is our three different users, we're gonna have access to all of that information in here when we wanna style this stuff. So then inside my figure, I've added my image element here and we need to populate its source image with our dynamic content string. So to do that from scratch, I'll just remove this here and then click on our little dynamic content icon here, which will bring up our pop-up. And remember that for this instance, we're not referencing a post field. We're referencing something that is on our user account itself. So I'm gonna search for user field. And if I go up here and select user field, We'll see that since this is a nested subfield, we actually can't pull in that data to auto populate a select like we mentioned, but we do know from looking at it earlier that the key was just image. So now if I jump down to my plus, add that to my image, we'll now see that image source come through and we've populated our three little avatars for our imaginary instructors with this class. One final little trick to look at here is the reason I put the provider on this div surrounding all of these images rather than just providing and consuming it on the figure around this image itself is because there is other ways we can use these providers rather than just directly accessing the data from the resources themselves. For example, there is helpful bits of metadata associated with any looper such as the looper count, which is how I'm getting this number here saying that there are three instructors that teach this class. So we need that provider to be on a parent so that we can later consume it in some way down here in a child, even though we're just using it as a dynamic content string here. And the way I'm accessing that, as you can see here, is with this DC looper count string. And again, the way we would find that is to click on our pop-up. And if I search on count, I'll go down here and find my looper section and you can see total item count. Click on that, it gets added to my editor and is an output in my text below. Mm -hmm.